Hello? Yeah, um, is TikTok really gonna get banned? And is Microsoft really gonna buy the company? Because I'm super confused. Why is TikTok giving away a billion dollars to creators? Can I, can I get a piece of that? How do I, how do I stand up? So if you're anybody like me, I've been observing the internet and there's some shocking TikTok updates that uh, you should know. If you're a business, influencer, or brand, listen up. I'll be explaining the tea as of August 1st, 2020. Also, I'm hungry, so I'm gonna eat this banana as we speak. Let's start with the first news and update. TikTok is apparently getting banned tomorrow. Um, it's Saturday as we speak, so apparently President Trump in the US is gonna ban it tomorrow. So let me reel you back in to talk more about what's going on. So if you guys don't know, TikTok is a Chinese owned social media platform. There's over 300 million users. And in the span of quarantine, like everybody has been on it. If you haven't heard about it, then I'm, I don't know why you're on this channel. We talk about social media. Anyways, it's just a big platform. And um, it's always been a threat to security. Like social media and security has never been a new thing. Well, keep in mind two years ago, Facebook got in trouble for their privacy and data issues, sharing too much user data to the government. So essentially this is not a new thing. Now the reason why Facebook didn't get banned and why TikTok is getting banned is because the Chinese government owns this platform. And I don't really know how I feel about this, but let's take a deeper look. A reporter heard from Trump that as far as TikTok is concerned, we're banning them from the United States. I have that authority and it's gonna be signed tomorrow. I need another bite of my banana because this is this is a lot. In a way, it makes sense why TikTok would be a banned or national threat because if a platform has so much user data, specifically 300 million active users a month, um, and has so much information, if someone who is not a good person had all this data, they could do some horrible things to a government. But what does that say to the other social media platforms, right? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, love them, but like, they're all collecting our data. And I just don't understand that, like, for example, if TikTok's being banned, what does that say about Amazon? What does that say about Facebook? Jennifer Garnick, Garnick, Granick, I'm, I'm really, I'm really sorry. Jennifer from the Cybersecurity Council also agrees. She says, with any internet platform, we should be concerned about the risk that sensitive private data will be funneled to abusive governments including our own. By shutting one platform down, it will harm the freedom of speech of the United States. I mean, it's just, it's just unjustified. And Jennifer really speaks about that in her point of view, which I will link an article below if you want to read more about what she says. I mean, this is, this is huge. Um, if TikTok gets banned in like six hours, then a lot of people who were using TikTok for their business or their main source of income are going to be in deep waters. And if you guys don't know, my company is called X8 Media. We own a YouTube channel called The Green Room and we interview creators. And I've talked to people on TikTok that have made, you know, their living off of it. And it's, it's definitely concerning to, you know, be at such a high employment rate and then have this also cut out. All right, so if this wasn't already juicy and interesting, there's a second update to this, which is the fact that TikTok is apparently gonna still keep going. So basically the same time Trump told the reporter with Air Force Ones that he's banning platform, TikTok releases this video and it's confusing. The US general manager, Vanessa Papas, Papas, Pip, I'm, I'm really sorry again. Um, she says that TikTok is not going anywhere. Uh, wait, uh, so, uh, do, do we not just see that the president said that you're gonna get banned? Like I'm really confused. And a lot of speculations say the reason why Vanessa or TikTok is staying in the US is because Microsoft is actually planning to buy TikTok, which goes into update number three. So essentially a US company, Microsoft wants to buy TikTok and they are already negotiating this. And some articles say this already happened. Some say that this doesn't, I don't know much, but all I do know is that kind of makes sense because if the concern is putting back power into the US hands, I mean, that could be potentially a solution. Okay, but like when you think about it, like one person having central power in data is still not good or bad, whether it's China or the US, like even if Microsoft has it, it's just another example of how a big company owns data. And this time it's just contained in the US because if it's in China, it's worse. However, the issue is literally all these updates happen in the span of like six hours and we're not sure which one's right. This honestly leaves a lot of people with companies or brands or influencers really sketched out because what do you do when the platform that you're making money off of or just living off of 
is gone. This is a huge thing because a lot of people felt safe in this creator economy because with a lot of people losing jobs due to COVID, we kind of thought this creator economy was safe. Like making money online was gonna be the more optimal option. And with this happening in the way, we're just like boom, boom, boom. Life is just like, nope. <laughs> And uh, that was actually my 2020 year. It's just getting beat up by random things that you can't control. With that being said, other platforms are seeing this and taking it into account. Instagram is creating Instagram Reels, and essentially it's a TikTok version of their app where you can upload 15 second short videos that are lip sync and dance oriented. And Instagram is trying to buy off TikTok creators onto their platforms. And the same thing is going with another app called Thriller. Thriller bought Sway House creators who are top TikTok creators onto their platform. These are all social media platforms with like the same type of format um, with a few differences, of course, but it's just a little concerning how um, all this is happening in like two weeks. And if you're not confused already, TikTok also released a $1 billion creator fund to give creators money. So like all these platforms are competing for creators and attention and it's just like, what is going on? So this leaves us to where we are today. What do we do? If you're on this channel, you might be an influencer. I read your guys' comments and I know a lot of us are making content on social media. So specifically to you guys, here's my advice. Don't freak out. It's going to be okay. Just diversify your content. Now, the reason why I mentioned this and I don't think we should freak out is because this happens cyclically in the industry. Like a scandal will come out, a company will survive or not, and then a competitor will take over that market and just keep continuing. Like that's exactly what happened to Vine. Vine just got, you know, bankrupt, died, and then two years later, Musical.ly slash TikTok appeared. This could happen over and over again, and it's cyclical in the economy. So I really believe it's important to just diversify your content strategy. Just understand this is life. Like literally we can't control the outcome as much as we'd like to. And in regards to TikTok's creator fund, I honestly don't know how I feel about this. One um, one idea I just mentioned was just like, if, if you're giving cash to a creator to hope that they stay loyal, what do you think they're gonna do with the cash, right? Like the whole goal I, I would hope is to give creators money so that they could live off of it or you know, have a stable income so that could be their job. But it seems like TikTok is giving cash to like top, top creators. And if you're giving, for example, an Addison Rae another million dollars, like what is she gonna do with it, right? I think. It just needs to be fairly distributed. And my concern is that, you know, platforms are just giving money to top creators. I'm not really diversifying it to, to the masses. So I don't know how fair it really is. So what this basically means is I don't even know if this $1 billion is going to really work and, and get loyalty from people just because if there's only like 10, if they're basically diversifying to the top 1% of TikTok, you're going to lose loyalty from users. And I think, with social media platforms, especially with the trend of relatable and you know more authentic creators, people want realness. And if you're basically inflating the top 1% over and over again, I'm not sure what that says about what consumers truly want, which is authenticity. Do I even make sense right now? I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Essentially, I just don't know how fair it is to just give cash to people who don't necessarily need it. If you're a brand watching this video or your business, this is my thoughts. I personally think there's going to be a break in bigger tech. Like consumers are going to travel and, and really want smaller platforms. It's kind of, excuse me. It's kind of like how Patreon and smaller membership communities are really thriving. Um, not to go into another platform, but there is a platform called OnlyFans. If you guys don't know what it is, it's like an exotic content platform where people take pictures of their body. Anyways, I, <laughs> I think that's a completely different platform, but it's growing like crazy and it just shows how consumers want authentic content. I don't think I should use the OnlyFans reference. Essentially, I really believe that the next platform, whatever it is, is going to be really niche oriented and the winner of the platform is going to hone in on the community. I think there's going to be a real big emphasis when, when central power fails, people really will look towards their internal communities. So I personally can maybe just predict that in the next few years, I think there's going to be less bigger apps and smaller apps with communities inside for example, an entrepreneurship app where all the creators are talking about that certain topic. 
or a cooking app and, and it kind of hones in on those people. I, I don't know. I think that the reason why that will be necessary is really truly to make sure that if the whole problem with TikTok is having power in the wrong hands, it needs to be distributed to the right people. And I think the only way to do that is through smaller platforms. So if you're an app developer, just something to keep in mind. I don't know. I mean, I personally was super interested in the app world. I launched an app in 2018 um, to start my circle of communities and I didn't have the funding for it, but I, I continuously believe that maybe I was just a bit early. Long story short, if you're a content creator or business, I think the key is smaller communities. And I guess this leaves off to the last part of this video, which is just basically saying like, you really can't control the outcome of the future. If you're someone dealing and affected by COVID or unemployment, it's not your fault. It's nothing that you, there's so many things we can't control, but the thing that we can't control is our response, our reaction and our perspective of the way we look at complex issues. Last week I was speaking at a tech conference called Twilio and um, I was talking a little bit about how crises affect generations. And like I mentioned, this is not the first time that data and privacy has been an issue. I really think that we're gonna move forward, it's gonna be okay, and whatever happens, which I don't really freaking know, um, things are gonna happen for a reason. It's gonna be important not to worry as much during this time because there's nothing that we can do. And if you're someone who's a brand and you're a little bit spooked about this because you were like betting on TikTok, like don't worry because everything literally happens for a reason. You don't even know how many times I've learned something that I thought was stupid and unrelated, but all the knowledge comes back in the future. I don't know, that's where I'm currently at and I hope this video was at all informative. I had way too much coffee um, and only a single banana for my food today. So I'm gonna go eat some actual food. Thank you guys for watching. What do you guys think? Comment below. <laughs> Me too. Comment below your personal thoughts on everything going on. If you're affected by it, I would love to hear your story. I'll read your comments and shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. And yeah, we'll see how this unravels. Maybe next week I'll do a part two if Microsoft really buys TikTok. But I am deciding to start my thriller in Instagram Reels career. So you guys can follow me there as uh, I test those waters out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See y'all later.